In this video, we're going to talk about ETFs and swing trading ETFs and how ETFs may be the perfect option for you because they do offer different advantages over trading stocks, including diversity, liquidity, and lower cost. Before we get started, if you could hit like and subscribe to our channel, be much appreciated. So if you've never heard of exchange traded funds, basically they're a type of investment that trades on a stock exchange. So with an ETF, uh, traders are exposed to a basket of assets, such as stocks, bonds, commodities, or currencies. You can also think of ETFs, something like a mutual fund, in that they carry a basket of securities, but they trade just like a stock does on a stock exchange. So when owning a single share of an ETF, you actually have an indirect interest in all of the stocks or other assets, whatever they are, that are held by that ETF. It is a great, sometimes inexpensive way to buy a collection of stocks instead of selecting individual stocks. And with a lot of brokers out there, trading an ETF can be cheaper than trading the stock or the commodity directly. And with an ETF, you can actually be involved in certain sectors of the market. For example, let's say you feel that the energy sector is due for a bullish run. Well, instead of buying individual stocks, you could buy the XLE ETF, which is an energy sector ETF. And it contains a basket of 24 stocks, including Exxon, Chevron, Kinder Morgan. Now, all stocks in that basket, they're not weighted the same and Exxon and Chevron actually make up 45% of the ETF in terms of the influence on the price action. Do you want to track the entire S&P 500 index? Well, then you could take a look at the spider, the spy. You want to focus on a specific country? Well, there's ETFs for that as well. Now we're going to talk about swing trading. And what is swing trading? Generally, it's described as a type of trading that attempts to capture gains in an instrument over a period of days. And swing traders will usually hold position for several days and they're trying to take advantage of short-term price fluctuations. Now compare that to a day trader, they're looking to exit their position by the end of the trading day. In a more extreme example, think of a scalper. They live in that world of seconds and minutes. For me though, you know, other people think swing trading is oh the daily chart, the hourly chart, the weekly chart. For me, I just consider swing trading to be more about trading a with the trend swing and exiting before price reverses against me. And, if that means holding for a day or several weeks, that impulse swing is where I want to be involved. So I call that swing trading, trading a swing in the market. So in order to be successful as a trader in general, you got to have a good understanding of some technical analysis and understanding trends of the market. Now, this is not to say that trading against the trend is to be avoided, which is called counter trend trading, but inexperienced traders would be better served by trading with the trend. Many traders will use technical analysis to find trading opportunities. With technical analysis, you can identify support and resistance levels as well as trend direction. And whether you use indicators, price action, chart patterns, it all falls under the title of technical analysis. And in our channel here, there are enough videos to give you a really good groundwork into technical analysis. So you should dig into those. So let's talk about why you might want to choose to swing ETFs because they do offer a number of different advantages over stocks. ETFs are actually more diversified they're more liquid and lower cost than stocks. So the main advantage over stocks to me is that they're more diversified. So when I swing trade an ETF, I'm trading a basket of assets as opposed to an individual instrument or a ticker. This diversification can help reduce risk and actually increase your chances of success. For example, let's say I'm trading a bank stock. If it's declining, I could be heading for a loss. But if I was trading the XLF, which is the financials ETF, it could be rising as other stocks in the baskets doing quite well, right? So with an ETF, you don't rely on just one particular stock or whatever instrument it is to go in your direction, but there is some weighting, right? It makes a difference. If Exxon, for example, is falling, while well, the energy sector may have issues gaining upside traction just because of the weighting that Exxon has. Another advantage, they're actually more liquid than stocks. This means that they're easier to buy and sell ETFs, and you're not really running the risk of slippage in or out of it. Finally, depending on your broker, they can be transacted at a lower cost to trade than stocks. Some, when you buy them, there is no cost. 
that's going to save you some money in the long run. That's going to help you earn more consistent profit. So let's talk about liquidity for a second with ETFs. So you can't just look at the volume of the ETF when you're deciding which one you're going to trade. Because with an ETF, there are two main factors that determine whether it's liquid enough. The number of shares that are available for trading and the activity of traders, the volume and the liquidity of each security within the fund that makes up the overall ETF liquidity. An ETF that invests in securities that are limited in supply is going to be difficult to trade. The bottom line is there's really no need to reinvent the wheel. Most traders should just stick to the more popular ETFs like the SPY, the SQQQ, XLF, QQQ, EMM. And while there are a few similarities with stocks, when you think about individual stocks, that price is going to rise and fall on the basis of supply, demand, and the outlook for the company. And there are only so many shares of stocks that are available. Right, that's the supply. But with an ETF, the market maker can actually create units. It's called being open-ended. So there is no supply issue. So the ETF price is based on the value of all the securities held in the portfolio. Now, let's talk about some strategies for ETFs. There's a lot of different strategies you can use to swing trade them. And they can be broadly grouped into three main categories, mean reversion, breakout, and momentum. Right? Trading an ETF is no different in terms of approach than any other instrument that you may be trading. So let's talk about mean reversion. This is simply a strategy that's based on this concept that an instrument tends to cluster around a mean value, so an average price. So essentially price tends to make an exaggerated move, so a large move to either side of the average price and then tries to get back to it. And when trying to get back to the average, price may overshoot it and then it's going to attempt to correct it back to the average price. This is actually the ETF XLK, it's technology. And I just put on a 20 period simple moving average. I highlighted some areas where price interacted with the average. So if you swing trade a price decline in the ETF back to an average price, so shorting it, you're not gonna short all those moves that went to the upside. You know, you're gonna wanna find a large move that's unlike a recent move in the recent past. One approach is to use large ranging candles. You can also use the turtle soup strategy, which I've linked above, or bring up a Keltner channel with the default settings, place that on your price charts. So here's the Keltner. Now we have some smaller runs into the upper channel. You can see that with those circles. And yeah, you could have traded those shorts, but that one on the right, that's more interesting. You can see that price is driven to new highs and we get multiple closes outside that channel gives me a heads up for a mean reversion play. You get a trend line break or just price reclaiming the former resistance level, that could be an entry for a short. Now the idea behind a breakout strategy is you wanna enter a trade when price breaks above a resistance level when we're thinking about going long. Now this typically happens when there's a surge in buying pressure in the market and that can push prices higher, but not always, nothing's guaranteed. And some traders are going to monitor volume on the breakout However, higher volume will at times show up after the breakout. So if you want to successfully use a breakout strategy, it's really important to be able to identify when the price is about to break out. You can do this by studying past market data using technical analysis tools, but essentially we're looking for a volatility compression where the range of price gets tighter. That's what you want to see. And once a breakout is anticipated, the trader can enter into a long position in the ETF. This is actually the Bollinger band squeeze strategy. So what we're looking for is to see the bands inside the channel. So those black arrows, the blue Bollinger band lines are inside the black channel lines. This shows us a compression in the volatility of price. Also note with the black lines, we actually get a triangle chart pattern. That's going to show us lower highs, but higher lows. That is a compression of volatility. And if breaks and price continues to move higher as we expect the trader can exit the trade with a profit when the price move movement begins to stall if price reverses and starts to move back down you just get out of the trade to avoid losses now there's different ways to trade breakouts okay but the squeeze one here is shown is a method to consider right you're going to need to define your entries you're going to have to define your exit strategy and just your overall trading approach momentum strategy this is where we're looking to trade in the direction of the trend after a pullback, which is a correction in price movement. Some traders will also consider momentum trading a part of breakout trades as price, hopefully, is showing momentum after the break. But I consider trading the reversal out of a pullback to be more of a momentum play. Some are going to differ, of course, but 
whatever works for you is what matters. But the bottom line is we want to see momentum in every trade that we're in. Unless we're talking about options, that's a different story. So this is a standard trend line. And when price pulls back to an area around the line, you could just trade a break the down trend line as an entry. Sometimes you might want to add a momentum indicator such as the MACD or the RSI and look for a hook in the direction that you want to trade. That could be an entry as well. And again, on our YouTube channel, there's so much information that if I've covered something and you don't understand, just search for it in our channel and you will find the answer for it. Overall, ETFs can be a great option for swing trading. There's a lot of reasons. The ability to trade a wide variety of assets. You can use a bunch of different strategies to trade them. Just make sure you consider the fees that are associated with it as well as the liquidity and the volatility of the underlying assets, right? With ETFs, you get a great exposure to a variety of different markets, even countries, commodities, and swing trading provides traders with the flexibility to trade around their schedules, right? It's not like day trading or scalping. That there's no one perfect strategy for swing trading ETFs, so it's important to experiment with different approaches to just to find out what works best for you. You know, ultimately, with anything, the bottom line is you need to have well-defined entry and exit strategy that has a positive expectancy over time and you have to stick to it. Be consistent. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe.